Welcome, week one. Let's get into it, boy. I'm so excited. I'm not gonna give you um, a version that I still don't know what happened. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I do want to say, I do want to be able to use this platform to say, like, what if I wasn't Tyreek Hill, bro? Like, worst case scenario, you know? Because it's crazy. Like, I want to be a cop one day. I got a state trooper hat, all that, you know? So I got a lot of respect for cops, man. But um, obviously, you know, everybody has bad apples in every situation, you know? So, and you know, I have a platform, and I want to be able to team up with you guys. So... Hey, if you don't know, my name is Keith. I do Black Quarterback Series, and today, well, tonight, I'm recording this. Uh, we are Black Quarterback Series. My name is Keith um, from Black Civilization, from Black Civilization Radio. I'll get more into that at the end of the video, but let's talk about week one. So, my plan was to have highlights of Caleb Williams opening up this um, opening up this episode. Didn't have any highlights because he only passed for 92 yards. So let's let's get into let's get into a very rocky debut of Caleb Williams. So Caleb Williams was 14 for 29, 92 yards. Um, they only had 141 yards total offense, but they ended up winning. I don't know. I do this every year where I don't put the scores on her. Then be like, oh my god, where's the scores at? Ended up winning based off everybody, every other uh, group playing excellent. Special teams got a touchdown. Defense got a touchdown. Defense caused a few fumbles that led to touch that led them to scoring touchdowns. Like everybody else played so well for the offense just to not play well at all. Now it's week one, so I'm not like too concerned that. Um, he didn't play well, blah, blah, blah. His, it's his first real run as a starter in the NFL. I'm not expecting everybody to light the world on fire. You know, he, he's like the first player to win a start as a rookie and I don't know how long. So I'm not looking for um, him to, like, set the world on fire. But I did want to see something. I didn't see anything. You know, it was a couple it was a couple passes there, but he also missed I think what I got. He missed two touchdowns. He missed two touchdowns and never really looked comfortable. So, um it's week 1. I expect him to look better as the season goes on, but it wasn't it wasn't the best opening weekend. So. Okay, so the next rookie is Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels. So, let's get his numbers out the way. Um, Jaden Daniels, 17 for 24, 184 yards, 16 carries, 88 yards, and two touchdowns. So, I've seen a lot. I saw a lot, and this is just Twitter and, you know, social media as a whole. The game has evolved, guys. Players are not pocket passers no more. People run. People run now. Um, Bo Nix running all over the field. Josh running all over the field, Lamar running all over the field, Jaden running all over the field. That's just how the game is now. If Tom Brady has a really, I don't think this this um, like coincides with it. Tom Brady has a really good interview. I can't remember where I saw it at, where he talks about how coaches are not really teaching the game the way they did when he was coming up, right? And I think that contributes to a lot of the running, right? And with the guys having a play sooner. The guys have to play sooner, so they're going to rely on what they're good at running, which is in this case Jaden Daniels is. And I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a um a statement here, and I might break it out into its own video or its own little thing. The DMV has two of the most talented quarterbacks in their area. Take that for what you are. The DMV has the two most talented quarterbacks in the league. Just like. Running, running wise, and being able to throw, they may have the two most talented guys in um, in the league. And if you're not from um, if you're not from America, DMV stands for what is it? Virginia, Maryland, and DC. Baltimore is in Maryland. That's the other guy. And then we have Jaden. Um, so he looked up to Lamar as motorcycles. All of a sudden, now want to drive ar- around as I'm recording. You see a lot of similarities in their games, especially year one. I think Jaden is way more polished than um, than Lamar was, even in college, right? 
And so, just from the game, it looks like, I don't, obviously, I don't have the all uh, 22. It looks like Jaden didn't have either bad offensive line or there was just nobody open. And so, he had to run. And, hey, for a first game, we're not really looking at scores. We're not really, like, basing Washington's season on if they win or lose. We just want to see development because we know Washington is turning over right now. So, Washington could not win five games and then still be buried in Carolina. So, I'm not talking about Carolina um, until they do something significant. I'm sorry, Bryce, but you're just not a non-starter until your team is better. So, And y'all got the doors blown off. And y'all against the Saints, and I th- the Saints think they playoff contenders. So, that's all I'll say about the Panthers right now. So, um, And the Panthers need to bring Cam Newton in as a, some type of front office person to handle that. I think Cam would be excellent in the front office, and he wants to do it. And so, so that's it for the rookies. So we're going to go to Indiana and um, – not Indiana, the Colts versus Houston. Let's get the numbers out the way. So CJ was 24 for 32, 234 yards, two touchdowns. Mixon had a hell of a day, 30 carries, 159 yards in the touchdown. Nico Collins had a hell of a day, six receptions, 117 yards. And I didn't write down he scored a touchdown, but I feel like he scored a touchdown. He has some phenomenal catches, especially one on the sideline – to essentially ice the game. So this game was pretty much in hand. And shout out to Trey TV, Trey Live, Trey Sold. Have, have he want y'all go him by. He's excellent content creator. Makes hella funny content. Um, so he went to the game. So I looked at his stream. He was talking about the game. And then I went to go back and look at the game myself. I was watching it. But I was watching it with, you know, 14 other games. All right. So, but from what, from what I saw. It's amazing what one play could do to change the momentum of a whole game. Indy, Indy was dead in the water until they got a big play. They got a big play by their defense, and then they end up scoring, and now we're off to the races. But the Texans were no slouch. The Texans easily could have put up 40 points in this game. But I think they thought the game was over, too. And you could kind of – as the game was – the flow of the game was going, neither offense – it kind of hit a stagnant there to where neither offense could really get it going. But um, Houston has so much talent on the offensive side of the ball. I just didn't even realize how much – I didn't watch them in preseason. So I didn't realize how much talent they have on that side of the ball. It's crazy. You might think you might have three, four all pros on that side of the ball. It's, it's, it's crazy how much talent they have on that side of the ball. And Nico was the one that got off today. Who, who knows? It might be Diggs. It might be Diggs the next week. So, um, it's just so much talent, it overwhelmed them at the end. Um, but Houston could have lost, but I don't think they would have lost, you know what I mean? But uh, I expect they, the next time these, this game, to, the next time these two teams play, it'll be a lot more high scoring, I think, because I think Anthony Richardson will be better and Houston will ultimately be better. But it was still a good game, needless to say. Anthony Richardson, I saw some great, and I saw some, geez, geez, that's not very good. So it's a mixed bag. He played a few games last year. So this is essentially his rookie season, and uh, he's figuring it out. I saw the talent there. He had a real, he had a really, really good run where he ran over three people to get to the end zone and made it a real game. That's what I was talking about, them getting the momentum back. Um, ultimately, Houston is really just better. Game. You know? And um, I expect – Anthony Richardson to look better as the season goes on just based off the fact that he's essentially a rookie. He only played a few games. Um, but the talent, the talent is, the talent is definitely there. The talent is definitely there. So if he keeps playing, if he, his trajectory is Cam Newton. His high end is Cam Newton. And his floor is, his floor is where he is now. But his ceiling is probably Cam. I don't really I don't see him like becoming a deadly passer like that. But I would hope so, but I see a ceiling being Cam Newton. So let's get to the biggest upset. I spoke about um Mixon earlier. And you know, Joe Mixon used to play for um Cincinnati. So he used to play for Cincinnati, they didn't want to play him. He ends up in Houston. Cincinnati loses to Gerard Mayo and Jacoby Brissett. I didn't even think about giving this game one look until I was on the red zone and Jacoby Brissett was playing. I thought, that, I thought Drake May was going to start. 
that's on me for not really keep, not keeping up with that. I knew I knew Jacoby was there, but I just I was, I was just oh yeah, he's not. They're gonna start the rookie. That's normally how that goes. But Jacoby played well and he won the job, so uh, I was happy. To, I was happy to see that. So Jacoby was fifteen for twenty four, one hundred twenty one yards, and Ramon J. Stevenson was the one that really led the charge. 25 carries, 120 yards, and a touchdown. Cincinnati kind of played very careless. Are we talking like three fumbles, and they just wasn't all the way there. And it, it's, it's three pillars. There's three pillars that I wrote down as I was watching this game. Either they didn't take the Patriots seriously, the Patriots are better than we thought they would be this season, or Gerard Mayo just outcoached Zach Taylor. I think it's a combination of all three. But there's no reason that Cincinnati you should lose to the New England Patriots. With a new coach, a new quarterback, a new philosophy, and all this. There's no reason you should lose to the New England Patriots. So um and we're gonna have to be we're gonna have to be honest with Joe about Joe Burrow. If Joe Burrow keeps looking like this, we have to be honest. Because Josh played excellent today. We'll get into we'll get into that game later. Mahomes, he he was Mahomes Thursday. Lamar, he was Lamar yesterday. So the top dogs play well. And Joe's supposed to be in that conversation, and he was the only one that didn't play well. So, But like I said, it's week one. I'm not going to overreact to week one, but that's just a trend that I'm seeing. And so next is Pittsburgh. So we have a weird development in Pittsburgh. It was already developed, but Pittsburgh has a quarterback issue. I think Russell Wilson's, Russell Wilson's hamstring is a lot worse than we think it is. He didn't play much in the preseason. He didn't play much in the preseason, and he didn't play today. And Justin Fields looked comparable. He didn't. He wasn't making the. He wasn't making the mistakes. He hit the receivers where he's supposed to hit them. It looked like Tomlin shortened the playbook. That look, if the first read not there, run or get down. Right. Um, and you can do that when you have a defense that's as good as that defense was today. They had six field goals. They scored six field goals and didn't score a, a touchdown. Not a touchdown. And you still managed to win. But every team's not Atlanta. Every team is not Atlanta. And before I get into that, Fields was 17 for 29, 156 yards. And um, I put his rushing stats up there too, but he didn't really like the word on fire with the rushing. You can do that against Atlanta, and T.J. Watt goes absolutely nuclear, and it feels like y'all playing at home because Atlanta has a terrible fan base. You can do that, but are you going to be able to do that in the AFC North in Baltimore? And I, they've that's probably a poor example because they've essentially kind of owned Baltimore a little bit. But like, are you going to be able to do that in Cleveland? Are you going to be able to do that in Cincinnati? You know, those these are the teams you're going to see two times this year that you got to beat. And I don't think that philosophy is going to hold up against the other AFC North teams. But like I, like I, the theme of this video, it's week one, so I'm not going to really overreact to that. But it's something to think about. Justin Fields played well enough to win. He played as a game manager. He ran when he needed to. He hit George Pickens over the middle. He's talented. He feels as talented, but I don't know if this is sustainable because – if Russell Wilson is out next week, we're going to have to have a larger discussion. Is Russell Wilson going to play this year? Especially if they win next week. And Justin Fields looks, like, serviceable. So, um, that that just that remains to be seen. And a um, couple other things I have written on my notes. Um, old school football. The way they won today was old school football, and not every team is going to play like that. So... Um, Will Levis is not an NFL quarterback. He doesn't look – he looked terrible today. Um, I think it was fool's gold for them to move on from Ryan Tannehill. And this might be me being hypocritical because I don't like Ryan Tannehill, but at least Ryan Tannehill looked like a comparable quarterback. But, again, again, before people get in my comments, oh, nah, 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 it's week one. It's still week one. We're not going to overreact to week one. As I say that, we're going to overreact to week one. <laughs> so Dak Prescott was 19 for 32, 179 yards of touchdown. Deshaun Watson, 24 for 45, 169 yards touchdown, two interceptions. It was 17-3 at one point, and it was never close. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I didn't watch most of the second half, right? 
So I can't give you in-depth and deep analysis of this game and definitely because it was a blowout and I had to watch everybody else, right? So my thing is, when is it time to give up on Deshaun Watson? And um, I forgot who, who said it. I saw it on Twitter today. Is it time, do you seriously consider benching Deshaun and just going with Jameis? We're going to cover them either way, right? But it's sad what happened to Deshaun. It's, it's sad what his, his career literally took a complete 180. I got to, and if you look, if you look further down my feed and like my first three, four seasons of this, of black quarterback series, shout out, shout out to me. This is season six. Um, I wore Deshaun. I have a Deshaun Watson jersey. He was when I fell in love with Houston. If that Deshaun was here, they win this game. But because Deshaun is, I don't know, injuries and everything else he's going he's going through. His birthday is also next week, um, or in a few weeks. I, I, I don't know. It's sad. It's really sad what's going on with Deshaun, right? And um, I just wish Deshaun could. Um, I just wish Deshaun was better. I just, I just wish Deshaun was better. But um, they blew, they got blown out today. <laughs> you can't really take anything from a blood as a losing team. Dak Prescott got his money. Um, I said this on Instagram. Go check me out on Instagram, Black Quarterback Series. Um, Instagram.com slash Black Quarterback Series. Man, he got paid. He got paid. And I don't know what the Cowboys are doing. I think they just cool with mediocrity now. Because there's no reason you pay Dak Prescott all that money. Like it's just it doesn't make sense. It'll be on the screen, obviously. There's no reason you play Dak Prescott all that money. I'm so confused as to why you pay Dak Prescott all that money. Are you scared that you was gonna lose him? Like I, I'm I'm really not understanding why you pay Dak Prescott all that money. So but I'm glad he got his money. Congratulations. You know, I'm all for players getting their money. But as a as a organization, you got to trade Dak or figure something out. There's no reason paying Dak that money when he only is giving you two, three playoff wins. And he's going to do the same thing this year. Nothing is going to change in Big D. They're going to be competitive this year. They're going to lose against good teams. They're going to beat really good teams. And – they're going to lose in the playoffs to an inferior opponent or a better opponent. That's Dallas. That's the Dallas. I, wasn't, I actually wasn't going to do this review. I casually did it already, but I, I just I really wanted to re- re-record it after watching the game and going through more details instead of just brushing it off. Geno Smith. Man, I am – Geno Smith has been in this – in my black quarterback series for three years consecutively. He's an all-pro. He's led his team to the playoffs multiple times. Like – it's beautiful to see Geno Smith doing what he's doing. I think Justin Fields should look at Geno Smith and try to pattern his game after Geno Smith's game. They have they share a lot of similarities. Justin is just a more an electric athlete than Geno Smith is. So, and Geno is mature. I don't see character concerns about Justin. Um, so yeah, but Geno Smith was eighteen for twenty five, one hundred seven, one hundred and seventy one yards, a touchdown. An interception and a electrifying rushing touchdown. I I didn't even know Geno still had that in him. If if I um if I remember, I'm gonna put it on the screen so y'all you guys can see it. And so they ran the ball well. Walker 20 carries, 103 yards to touchdown. This game should have been over much earlier than it actually was. So the first half, this is all the miscues they had in the first half. Geno throws an interception, the first pass of the season. Um, they have two safeties, one because of the tackle in the backfield, and the next one was because of the holding call. Then you have a special teams, then you have a special teams fumble. You score on two of those and you're up 15. They're not up 15, but you might win by 15. Because Bo Nix showed a lot. Bo Nix is talented. Bo Nix was another one that was running around and he made it look good, right? So I think Denver's gonna be better than I initially thought. I just don't like Sean Payton in full transparency. Full transparency. So, but um, but yeah, I, I'm I, I'm liking what I see in from them. Mike McDonald coming over from Baltimore off that hardball tree. They look like baby Baltimore. They this game looks like a Baltimore Ravens type of win 
type of game. That defense looks like a Baltimore Raven defense. So it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see them. Um, watching them play made me real excited to actually like sit down and watch them. So really, really looking forward to seeing what they do from week two to 17. So last game of the day, Cardinals versus uh, Josh Allen. And I said it like that because Josh Allen went LeBron. And I'm, and I'm saying LeBron because they were down 17-0, and then Josh Allen took over, and they outscored uh, Arizona 34-11. And Arizona only scored like three of those points. They only scored three of those points because of a field goal. Well, not a field goal. Because of a kick return. So it's just like, what happened? It, it just they were playing well. That was up seventeen zero, and it's just like Josh Allen said, "All right, it's time, it's time to go crazy," and the Cardinals can never respond. The Cardinals can never respond. Um, Kyler Murray missing Marvin Harrison Jr. on the last play to even tie it up. So the Cardinals have a lot to work on. Kyler Murray was 21 for 31, 162 yards and a touchdown. So it's not like he played terrible, but the way the game was trending, Kyler should have had a 300-yard game. Josh Allen was 80, 82. 18 for 23, 232 yards, two touchdowns, and two rushing touchdowns. Dominant. He was dominant. His numbers don't show how dominant he was. They couldn't do nothing with him. They couldn't do nothing with him. So, um, so let's get into more of the other stuff, right? And then I'll get into... Uh, some of the things I've been doing this summer. So, Tyreek Hill and K-Dot. Kendrick Lamar is performing at the Super Bowl. Congratulations to him. Um, him and Dave Free are the creative directors of this, right? So, hopefully, they bring out Lil Wayne and all the cash money people. That would be an ultimate disappointment to New Orleans culture if they don't bring them guys out, right? Um, but I expect K-Dot, a student of the game, he does his due diligence with that if Wayne wants to do that, right? This is not the same Wayne of our childhoods. So, who knows if Wayne even wants to do that, right? Tyreek Hill being arrested. He said it in his press conference. If I can find it, I'll put it up. What if he wasn't Tyreek Hill? What would have happened? That, that Them officers are on an administrative leave right now. So, it's just like, y'all know how this goes. They being paid to just not be there. But what if this was what if that wasn't Tyreek Hill? What would happen if his teammates didn't come and save him from that? And he said that in the press conference. What if it wasn't him? It's so frustrating. He took it in stride. He scored a touchdown and act like he was getting locked up. It was funny. But I, I I'm so tired. Of, I'm so tired of seeing that. I'm so tired of seeing that. So that's all I got. Nope. I got one more thing. So, Black Civilization Radio. It's a radio station that I'm doing with uh, with my group. You see the shirt right here. So it's it's a wealth building group that I'm starting. I didn't start, but I'm starting in St. Louis with a few friends, and we're building, trying to build generational wealth and all those good things. Just trying to build up St. Louis with a group of great men, and um, we're gonna start a radio station where. I have, I'll give you guys more details about the radio station when it, launch, when it launches. So if you hear me say BC Radio and all those things, that's for our radio audience listeners. We're going to have some new people coming over here and um, really checking us out and seeing what we're doing. So um, stay tuned for those that news. Um, when we get up in our YouTubes and our Facebooks running, those will all be in the links in the description. Love you guys. I know you guys are watching. Um, so that's all I got for you guys today, uh, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.